Hey, everybody. Welcome to the success series with myself, TJ Barker, our special friend, guests, Mr. Woloshik, Mr. Goldberg. Um, I'm going to try real hard not to talk much today. So, TJ, go ahead and kick us off. What do we got on deck here? Why do we ask Stephen and David to join us today? You know, so, one, we're really excited to be kicking off the success series again. It's been a couple months, really, since we've got this going here. But a lot of people have been asking for it again. So, you know, we're, we're committed to keeping this going with sharing just, uh, you know, with our you know, stories and strategies uh, from our awesome kick-ass LO friends. Um, but today, just the conversation, man. What are these guys are doing to stay busy, to stay consistent in a crazy freaking market? And we were just talking about before we hit record, right, about the, the insanity of the market we're in right now where, you know, we're seeing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten offers coming in on every property. Um, you know, it's easy to get demoralized when your person – you know, submits an offer and just gets crushed, right, guys? Like, you're super pumped for this guy. You got him, uh, you know, approved at 56.37% back end DTI, squeezed every freaking penny you could out of his paychecks, only to see him coming in like $15,000 or lower than the seven other people that submit the offer on it with no closing assistance. So, I, I think it's just, just a conversation about what's going on, what's keeping you guys, you know, successful, consistent. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's a great way to start to, to relaunch the success series. Don't you fish? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, let's go ahead and hop over to Cleveland. I'm always impressed whenever I talk to David that, you know, in, in his city, I think the average loan size is what 90 grand, 110. But you know, when I talk to David, his personal average loan size is, is over 300,000. And, uh, you know, he's built his business in, in 50 States and he's built his business around quality and I, he shared some of the tips with me in the past, but uh, you know, David, what, how did, how did you get to this point where you have all these, these, these strong realtors and buyers that love you kind of not just in your area, but all over the country? Um, there's only a few that really love me. <laughs> <laughs> let's not, let's not kid ourselves here. There, there's one that I think if I bumped into her right now, she'd probably uh, pull out her gun, but um no, you know, it, 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 I kind of stumbled into it dumb luck, to be honest. Um, back in the day, I was doing nothing but refis. Um, we were taking lending tree leads, and this random purchase lead came through um, from California and did the loan, closed it, never thought about it again because um, I was still refi mind. And um, about two months later, that realtor gave me a call back and said, uh, Hey, I've got another client um, that needs to get a loan. Can you help me get pre-approved? And I said, great, you know, let, let's, let's go. And then I, I kind of said, well, this is pretty, pretty awesome. I can do, do purchase business from out of state, never thinking about it, you know, before that and um, stumbled into it. Um, I'm still dealing with that realtor today. That, that was back uh, in maybe 12 so it's probably been at least five years now that I've been dealing with her. Um, and, and now I've expanded it from there and I've kind of rolled that, you know, rolled that out beyond. Um, the key is, you know, doing a good job. It doesn't matter whether you're local or not local. If you're not communicating. If you're not upfront with them and tell them when there's a problem and you're not, you know, uh, and you're getting stuff done and that's, that's, that's all that matters. So, I mean, you can do it from, you know, the, the moon. I mean, you could, you know, uh, that's my thought. Why can't, you know, why can't I, and you know, I, I go down to Florida in the summer and hang out because um, I can do it from anywhere. And that that's, works for me. So doing a good job for one agent and then getting introductions to their friends. That's been one of that's, my secrets over the years. Yeah. That's, that's like one of the tried and true methods. I mean, you just, did you actually ask that agent to introduce you to her agent friends or did it just happen? Um, that one just happened. Yeah. Then I met, I, you know, I still have not actually met them, which is the weirdest part of the whole thing, but uh, <laughs> I've been dealing with her broker and then from there, their other agents, you know, so it kind of just expanded and I've become their, their in-house lender, um, you know, from, uh, from, across the country. So that's kind of cool. And then I've got, you know, similar things like that all around. Um, do you do Google Hangouts with course, them? Yeah, or? that's the, the, what's that? Do you do like live, live video Google Hangouts or Hangouts like we're doing with them or? 
Yeah, mostly just phone and, and you know, text and email. Um, but but once in a while I'll do that. I, I, I use Mortgage Coach and I'll, I'll do the presentations on there with video and, and uh, you know, do it that way to more to the borrower, but not to the, to the realtors. That's cool. So you've built your business off of doing good business, it sounds like. I've built my business off of doing good business. And because I'm fortunate enough to be 50 states, I can kind of target the areas where I don't have to do only $90,000 loans. So that's, cool. that's been so, key for me. So let me ask you this. So for new business, how are you, how are you targeting, um, you know, agents or, you know, in a certain area, are, are you doing any of the, you know, well, you know, a lot of us are real big into the lead generation, internet marketing and Facebook, right. marketing, et cetera. Kind of how are you approaching some of these newer agents in, in areas that you're not necessarily going to be able to, you know, call that make 40 phone calls and have coffee with 20 of them every week. Right. Right. Um, yeah, that, you know, I don't do enough of it. Um, to be honest. Um, fortunately I'm, I'm, you know, my plate's kind of full right now and I've kind of, that's the one thing I've slacked off on. Um, but, but in the past, you know, yeah, I've, I've done, you know, sending out different campaigns and doing things on Facebook and then, you know, trying to attract different agents. I've kind of stopped that because it's just, I don't, you know, I don't need it right now, um, which is great, but I know I can't take the foot off the gas because the minute you do that, then you have the, the peaks and valleys. Um, so I, I got a, you know, I actually had a, had a conversation with that uh, the other day with one of my guys, you know, about taking the foot off the gas and this business is just a killer. Um, and I'm guilty of it just like everybody else. We all do it. We get, get in these, routines we think we're doing great all of a sudden you have you know 20 deals working and life is great then you get sucked into those 20 deals and you forget about the the, the next month or the month after that um so that that's the the key for me that i gotta gotta work on better what's your team structure like dave do you have a i mean do you have an assistant do you have processing kind of how's yep. that run uh so about a year ago um i i hired an assistant um Three months ago, I actually transitioned him to an LO. Um, I have a new assistant now, and I also have four other loan officers now under me as well. Um, so I've kind of built in the past year. I went from zero to you know where I'm at with with the team. So it's been kind of a rapid progression there. But most importantly, you're still producing, right? I'm producing absolutely, and I will never be a non-producing manager unless they want to write me a very big check. <laughs> I tell you, one of, the, one of the biggest mistakes I've made over the years um, managing teams is getting so involved with their day-to-day, hour-to-hour activities that you know, I essentially became non-producing over that time. Not intentionally, it's didn't, didn't take a non-producing role, but what inevitably happens is you spend so much time building your team up and getting them ready that when they decide to, to leave you, and, and we know in this business – people leave you all the time right and all of a sudden your business is gone right because you've taken your foot off the gas you spent so much time building them up right. that all of a sudden you have a team of five or ten or twenty or whatever it is next thing you know you have a team of one and what do you do you're essentially starting over again so i think that comment yeah. you just made right there about never you'll never be non-producing is huge and i think that's one of the biggest mistakes that so many people make where like let's go become non-producing so we don't have to write loans anymore we'll just take care of everybody else that's going to bite you in the ass nine times out of 10. My opinion, you know, in my experience, maybe I'm just not a great not producing that. Sure. Agree. Yeah. Agree. 100%. I mean, I, it, you know, there's a reason that, that we're all successful loan officers because we don't stop. We don't take, you know, our foot off the gas for the most part. And, um, you unfortunately can't count on everybody else to do that for you. So that's my thought on it. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll always produce. One thing I noticed, you know, TJ, and this is, this is related to you and not necessarily David, but, you know, if you do take your foot off the gas a little to help manage, you, you can never take your foot or, or, I guess, ignore the pulse of the marketing in sales that's needed to be a successful LO, the, whether it's relationship marketing or internet marketing. Um, if you kind of forget how to bring the contacts in and how to find the folks that need mortgages, that's when you're dispensable. So like in TJ's case, you said you, you spent time managing, but you're able to reinvent yourself extremely quickly because you're one of the best marketers I know as far as relationship marketing and internet marketing. Yeah, it takes you a couple months to rebuild, but 
you never took your, your uh, hand uh, or you never took your foot off the gas when it came to learning how to market and learning how to, to find fruitful relationships. So that's one thing I see you doing a lot, David, is you're constantly making relationships all over the place and you don't know for sure which ones are going to bear fruit, but you're just always planting seeds. And, you know, if you did take a break from not producing, it would be okay because you've got a bunch of seeds out there and, and you can come back and harvest later. Yeah. You just don't want that tree to stop growing. <laughs> no. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I, I think that's a great point though there, Fish. Though. A lot of the people who, who, who are watching this who run in kind of our circles right here, um, I, I think it's safe to say we're never any more than 90 days away from crushing it because of all the little things that we know how to do. You know, from, from branding to self-promotion to relationship marketing to getting out in front of agents. And look, I guarantee you, every person, one of the four of us right now, every single one of us, if, if we put a challenge to schedule, uh, you know, five agent meetings, brand new agents could probably get it done in the next two hours. You know, and, th and there's not a ton of loan officers that know how to do that. And th that's, that's something that we all focus on and continue to focus on. So I think it's an excellent point, Fish. Um, even if you do screw up, even if you do follow, emulate TJ Barker and, and try to do everything completely wrong that can be done, you're still never more than 90 days away from just absolutely crushing it. If you kind of adhere to all the principles that, that, that we know and we talk about all the time. Yep. Cool. Very true. So what's, there's gotta be at least one secret, David, before we move over to Steven, there's gotta be a secret. There's gotta be something. <laughs> there's no, there's work really for a Fed charter with kick-ass rates, right? <laughs> Fed, Fed charter, I, I don't, I don't have kick-ass rates. I really don't. I got pretty shitty rates. Really? <laughs> my, 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 my conventional Fed, yeah. Dude, that's but, so funny because when we were Goldwater, when we were Goldwater, I've been able to market guys, myself. What's that? I said when we were Goldwater and talking to you guys, you crushed our rates. So I thought you had awesome wow, rates. <laughs> yeah, but as you know, margins can be played with throughout the company. So who knows, but, uh, you know, no, I mean, I, I'm competitive, you know, rate wise government. I'm great. Um, the niche, you know, where I've kind of gone after, um, is the 5% down, you know, jumbo space. I mean, that's, you know, just, there's not a lot of people doing it. Um, and that gets me in the door and that helps me get the loan loan sizes up, you know, because I'm going after that kind of business. So that's my secret sauce is that I'm, I'm, you know, targeting that. I'm not going in saying, Hey, give me your, you know, first time buyer business, you know, FHA or whatever. Cause that, that's, everybody's doing that. Um, so that's kind of the only average, that's, that's the angle I have to talk to somebody across the country that doesn't know who I am because I can offer them something that, that they're not getting locally. Cool. Hey man, I got a lead provider for you. that does 5% of jumbos. If, uh, yeah. If if uh, if you want to chat offline, I know I know a guy who uh, who runs them, and they're they're we've used them in the past. They're pretty good. All right. Awesome. So, all right. Sorry, fish hijacked it once again. No, you're good, dude. But, no, I I did want to ask about you know like having a specific value proposition or a hook or you know something that people identify you. At. That that's huge. Make yourself stand out, and and you know, I'm glad uh, I'm glad David mentioned that because I knew there was at least one little secret. That's a that's a great secret. So, jumbo princess. There you go. <laughs> All right, Stephen, we haven't heard you talk, buddy. So, so you know, I know, I, I know when we first started chatting before we turned the camera on, you were kind of backpedaling and saying, oh, I'm not the biggest producer in the room and I've never had huge numbers. And, but I've always respected you because year in, year out, you're always right up there. Maybe you're not in the top 2%, but you're in the top 10% in your state. And You've got a team, you've got LOs working for you, you, you manage a branch, you've been doing it for a long time, and you just have, it seems like a lot of balance and consistency from, from year to year and month to month, and you always got a big smile on your face. So, you know, <laughs> that, you. I, that's what I want to know. How do, you, how do you smile all the time? How do you get balanced, and how do you be consistent, you know? It's probably the longest period of time I've been quiet. I've been <laughs> on here a while. It doesn't happen that often. Uh, first of all, a, a huge thank you. Let's get through the courtesies or pleasantries or whatever you say. Fish and TJ, this group's amazing. And it's been about two years that I've been in it, maybe a little bit over. And everything that's happened in the last two years has been nothing short of amazing. And a, and a great deal of it is because of being able to hang out with superstars like you guys, 
Goldberg. Uh, and I'm honored and humbled to even be asked to be on this call when I think about Dre and their team and Brandy and Jim Prince. And I mean, we've got some amazing superstars in the group and I apologize for whoever I just left out, but that's what I strive for is to, to get to that kind of a, uh, of a level. So um, thank you for all that you've done with MFBA. Nashville was amazing. I can't wait for this year's event. Uh, and I'm just, I'm, I'm honored and humbled with regards to your question. Um, that superstar level status is, is where I want to get to. The challenge is having a team of people and being servant minded and doing the production that you want to do. And at the same time being there for them, because that's my ultimate goal and aim is to grow them. They came here because they weren't finding the success at the last place that they were. So I'm charged with the responsibility not just taking care of my customers, but taking care of everyone in the office. And therein lies probably my single biggest challenge is helping everybody grow and being available and present for them. Not like past managers that I've worked with where you're on the telephone and you can hear the keyboard going and you hear the uh-huh, uh-huh, and you know they're not present. So um, getting to that level and being where I want to be, Goldberg status, and yet taking care of my team and serving them that's the single biggest challenge. And uh, you're right. You hit, you talk about the ebb and the flow and just to kind of circle back. I remember a time where I had 10 to 12 really strong realtor partners. Then one of them became a lawyer. Then one of them became a state Senator. Then another one became a coach for bold. And all of a sudden I turned around and the 10 to 12 heavy hitters within a six month period, I was down to six. So when you talk about making sure you restock the pond or keep it in the faces, I don't want more right now, and I don't want rookies. I want established professional realtors that know how to put together a contract. I don't have to coach them through. I don't have to tell them how to read a well and septic inspection. I don't have to remind them to remove the pool table and the high-definition television and the dock that are personal items. So I hope after 13 going on 14 years now that I've earned the right to work with some of the folks that do it the right way. And I think that's a real key to business is not mucking around with all the, and, and I don't mean disrespect. I mean, we all started new somewhere, right? But I don't have the time anymore to be able to take a rookie and, you know, help them write a contract up. I want to work with salty dogs. And I think that helps with an efficiency standpoint. And what you asked about, how do I maintain a smile and, and happiness? Our business is up and down, dude. One minute you got 20 loans like Goldberg was talking about. The next minute you go, crap, where the hell's my pipeline? Because you're prospecting, then you're closing. Prospecting, and then you're closing. So this business is horrible if someone's bipolar or manic depressive. So for me, I got to find consistency. And it starts every day with the same regular routine. I do 100 push-ups every day, and I've done it for almost two years. I write in my journal every single day, and I talk about what I'm grateful for that day. And I think it's all up here. It's all mindset. And nothing happens to you. It's your interpretation of what happens. So for me, a lot of it is developing positive, consistent habits to level out highs and the lows that we have in this business. So long answer. Um, but I've loved the conversation thus far, and I'm honored to be a part of it. Do you do the 100 push-ups all at, like, at the same time, or is that over the course of like five hours? Well, I, I, actually, at one point in time, I, I was doing them until I fell and then I started like, like I would do 200 and then my shoulder started hurting. So my ch chiropractor said, why don't you just cut that back to a hundred every day? And I do them straight up 100 every single morning. That's pretty badass. I'm, I'm speechless. <laughs> like I can't. <laughs> that it, it didn't start that way. It started with 10 and then it was 15 and then it was 20. And just like everything you build, you don't go from zero to 60 overnight. It's, it's small steps. So not like I did it like a snap of a finger. It took some time to work that up, but now I can bang out a hundred pretty quickly. Awesome. But that has little to do with mortgages, but it does speak to developing positive habits and consistency and things where um, it's easier to manage the highs and lows. If you've got certain things that are always static that you have control over, it makes it easier to, to take care or react to the things that are beyond your control. 
And we have a lot of that in our business. You guys can attest to that. Now, how, what do you do with your team? Do you guys have like, like weekly meetings? You just kind of let them do what they're going to do. Do you, you step in when they need you? I mean, what's the structure to that? I mean, you got structure in your personal production, but what about your team's production? It's a really, really good question. And when I had the opportunity here at Prime, um, I micromanaged horrifically to the point where my area manager says, Stephen, meetings every two weeks? Are you kidding me? You know, and then we're an hour long. And, and you and I worked at the same employer, Fish. I had eight to 10 conference calls per week putting in tick marks in the portal. Um, so I don't, I don't even know what I was thinking. Cut that back to once a month. Uh, thus far this year, we've had one meeting. We'll have one coming up in May. When you hire seasoned professionals, when you hire the right people, that's paramount if you want to build a team. The last thing you need to be doing is hand-holding. I can't teach someone how to underwrite a loan or to go look up the guidelines or what happens with this or that. I got to be there, right? But I couldn't handle four newbies two to three years in. I think Jim Prince hires a lot of people that are, you know, from the car sales uh, business and they're clean slate. He likes it that way. Me, I got to have the right people that know how to underwrite a loan, that are professionals, that are servant leaders, uh, always putting the customer first. You hire the right people, you get the right, and we all know. It's about who you've got in the back of the house, right? And it's kind of a derogatory term, but I'm only as good as Kristen and Amy processing and carry the loan officer assistant. I don't, it doesn't matter how likable you are or how much BS you can spin. If you can't execute on what you say you're going to do with the people that are supporting you, you're cooked. I don't care where you work. I don't care how good you are, good looking, intelligent, know the guidelines in and out. Uh-uh. Your company and your processors and underwriters and closers have got to support you. And that's, I'm so, I feel so blessed. I'm not going to talk about anything about my specific company, but with our team, we're really blessed to have good people. So I, I'm not going to hire newbies. Maybe, maybe a junior to train them, to do them the right way. But other than that, I want, I want salty dogs with good reputations that can, and I'd rather have Three $12 million producers doing it the right way than one $36 million prima donna all day long. So how did you create relationships with those people? I mean, and get them to come work for you? Because I think that's where, you know, a lot of people are, are saying, hey, I'm going to go recruit these people. I want to find these LOs that are producers. That's what I want on my team. You know, they kind of want what you have, but, you know, their approach is to getting those people to, to work with them. I don't know that they're always as successful as they want. Johnny Fowler talked about it at our tribe meeting in Denver. You do it the right way and you don't have to hunt. You don't have to go out. You don't have to appear to be the desperate um, person looking to fill seats. When you use social media and when you build name and reputation and the realtors and the title companies and customers hear all these great things about how you execute and how you get things done, your phone rings in the other direction. I don't, I mean, I, I absolutely need to stay in touch with other lenders in the marketplace, but the goal is that they inquire to see if they can come on board. And that first year to year and a half when we started here, we might have sat down with 10, 12, 15 people, and we passed on just about everybody because they had to be the right fit. That's the single biggest thing. We've worked so hard. In nine years, a majority of us have been together nine years, the last thing I'm going to do is disrespect any of these people that stuck their neck out to leave the safety of a big box bank to go to a virtual unknown in this marketplace. The last thing I'm going to do is muck up that culture by hiring the wrong person. So, in, in, and when I say I'm going to muck it up, I don't even allow myself that opportunity because when we interview people, we interview as a team. Are they going to fit the family? And are, are we going to allow them the opportunity to thrive where they're not finding success where they are? So we interview as a group, and sometimes it's too busy to get everybody, but we'll have four or five people maybe sit down with them. Not my decision. I'm not some ego-driven person that's going to say, well, I'm hiring so-and-so. No, hey, what do you guys think? You know, is this person a potential good fit? We all, we vet them out. That's and awesome. so far, we've hired two out of the maybe 20 that we've sat with and talked to. You know, so my favorite thing that you've said and was early on was, 
you know, being present for your people. You know? and, and, and I think that is, you know, key to someone who's managing the effort of others is have your phone and do not disturb. Don't answer text messages. You know, nine times out of 10, that text message is coming from your spouse, right? Telling you, telling you what you're screwing up or to pick up dinner or, or laundry detergent or something on the way home. You know, that can wait 10 minutes for you to sit there and have a conversation, be present for your people. Let them know that you truly do support them and you support their efforts. Um, when you do that, that, that instills a level of trust um, in you as the leader of that team or they will go to bat for you and they will work hard for you and, and they will put in those extra hours and they will make those extra phone calls and they'll do what it takes to be successful. Um, Cause oftentimes folks, uh, look, we want to believe that we all want to be successful for, for ourselves or for our families, but everyone has different motivations to be successful. And sometimes with a lot of people, their motivation is, is recognition. It's the pat on the back. It's, it's the sincere thank you. It's knowing that someone believes in them. And I think that that one little thing that you spoke about right there probably has a huge influence on your team, probably more than you know. Um, but being present, not typing when they're talking to you, really listening to what they're saying and not just doing the standard. Like here's an example of a conversation Fisher and I have right here. Fish calls me up. He's like, TJ, I got blah, blah, blah. And I start responding. Next thing I know, it's, it's a dead air. And he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I hear Jay in the background talking to Fish about something completely different. And then Fish comes back around to me. He's like, oh, wait a second. What were we talking about? No, that is awesome. But, you know, I'm kidding, Fish, kind of. <laughs> um, but no, you're not. <laughs> yeah, not um, dude, I think that's awesome. I think that is huge. I think if anyone takes anything away from your, what you have just spoken about, that one little thing, if you're someone who's managing the efforts of others, I promise you, will change the entire dynamic of your team. may not be immediately, but it will change the dynamic of your team if you are just present for them. So awesome stuff, man. TJ, I appreciate that. And, and I do go to great lengths. When someone comes into my office, I'll do the screen lock. So you, none of my screens are open. And this goes face down and I got a DND on my phone and I hit do not disturb. And I try and be as present as I can be. It's tough in our business to do that. But I try to do that with the team, with customers, with my wife and daughter when I get home. But it's not just text, man. I mean, I had two inquiries from Facebook Instant Messenger today from past clients wanting to get pre-approved. I mean, they're hitting us from every angle, man, from, from Instant Messenger to text to this phone to, I mean, you name it. So it is, it is tough. But some of the biggest lessons, just quickly on this, some of the best lessons I ever learned were from having managers in the past where, where Michael and I worked that did it in a way that I said I would never do it. When I first started working in the business, we had a manager that pitted us against each other. I was brand new in the business, and there was a guy that was next closest in seniority, and he had 10 years on me. And soon into me working there, the manager said, well, uh, so-and-so, Steven's nipping on your heels already. You know, what kind of an environment does that foster? It creates animosity. And that's the challenging thing in our business is it's so ego-driven and who's number one. I said I'm never going to do that. So there's never a who's number one over here, who's number two, or why aren't you producing like so-and-so. It's a team effort, a collaborative effort, and we're looking at a bigger vision that, that it's the group, it's the family, and not any one single individual. And I think as a leader, too, the other thing you've got to do is lead by example, which is why I'll always do what Goldberg said. I'm always going to produce. The minute you stop producing, you lose touch with what's happening on the street. And if the trash can is full, I'm going to go get it and I'll go take it out. I mean, there's, there's not a dang thing that I'm not going to do that somehow or other I'm above anybody else or someone else do a supply order. If we need supplies, I'll go order the coffee. I, you know what I mean? So I apologize for prattling on, but I, I do – I do agree, and I appreciate you saying, TJ, that being, being present is important, not just as a leader, but, but in life. Dude, I think it's awesome. So definitely not proud of one. I tell you, if, if you take anything, and folks watching this take anything from this uh, success series, it's do a kick-ass job like Goldberg does. Just do a great job, and that will inherently build new business. And then from what Steve's saying, you can quickly – build a team. You know, it's, it's something, you know, that I, I know a lot of folks are interested in is building a team, essentially having another, you know, stream of income. You can build a team because there are so many poorly managed 
shops and teams that are out there that if you do things a little bit better, if you truly believe in your folks, and you always hear me say it, manage the efforts of others. I rarely say you manage people. I always say you manage the efforts of others. You, know, you can get people to buy into you and join you and follow you and run through the proverbial brick wall for you fairly quickly just by following Steve's example and, and doing things just a little bit different than what is the norm. Because we know in this business, the norm, the bar is set pretty low. Right, guys? We, we've all worked for that shop, right? We've all worked for that group that, that's what you said. You know, you walk in and, and, and on the board, you know, you're, you're getting shamed the second you walk in because you know, the guy who sits two cubes down from you happened to book three extra deals that week type of thing. And then, and then you get shamed and it comes out over email or over the loudspeaker or, or, or someone does that whole like loud talking thing. They're like, oh, hey, by the way, did you guys see that Goldberg booked four more deals this week? Great job, Dave. Like, and, you know, Always be closing. Right. Always you know, be closing. closing. We know who you are, Alec Baldwin. But uh, so, I mean, those are my takeaways. Fish, I mean, Luckily for us, well, we always get to learn from this. <laughs> yeah, I, I learn every time I talk to Stephen. I learn. I, I do know one thing: Stephen will do almost anything in his office, but he won't order his own VOE. Just for the record, everyone needs to know that. <laughs> um, That's good. He also will, if you happen to visit his office and you happen to leave your wallet in his parking lot, he will <laughs> overnight to you and call you to make sure that it is delivered promptly and that you get your wallet back. <laughs> <laughs> what a good guy all right that that's pretty much all i got i appreciate you guys david do you have anything else i mean we we uh, kind of cut you off here for a minute but uh what, what do you got talk to us a little bit about what you thought about what steven had uh, the, the the greatest thing i've learned in the past year um is exactly what steven said and tj you have to give attention to the people when they when they need your help um i i struggle with that you know because I'm busy. I'm doing this. Even sitting here talking, I'm sending an email. You know, it, that's just the nature of this business. And and to be effective, you have to shut it off. And then the only way to do it, you're, you're right, Stephen, you know, turn off the phone, literally, you know, unplug everything, shut it down. Cause, cause otherwise it's, it's very obvious to anyone else that you have no concern for them. So that that's great, great tips. And, and also, got to give you a big public thank you for that packaging job because that was the funniest thing I've ever seen. That was awesome. <laughs> awesome. The wine delivery. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, not, not everybody's going to see that, but you got to explain what he did. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so when we were out in California, um, in Napa, um, for some reason, Ohio, I don't know what the reason is, but Ohio doesn't allow wine to be shipped into the state, obviously taxes, I'm assuming, but, uh, so I used Steven's address and, uh, when he got the wine, he shipped it over to me and I walked in yesterday morning, the FedEx guy came in he said, boy, you're a big celebrity, huh? And the box had <laughs> Steven got printed out my pictures all over the box, wrote my phone number, called David. He's the best mortgage guy in Ohio. You know, <laughs> give him a call. You rock. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. So I appreciate it greatly, but that just shows you the kind of guy he is. Take, take the time to do that. So that's awesome. All right, boys. Well, I think we're, we'll, we're going to go ahead and end it. So the folks that are watching can get back to whatever they're doing, but uh, I appreciate your time. I think I learned about 17 things about managing and producing that I need to implement tomorrow. Um, especially the things you specifically called me out on TJ. So yes, I agree. I need to <laughs> <laughs> it's not like this is the first time I've called you out on those. So let's, let's be real clear about that. <laughs> cool. So, all right, boys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut us off. Thanks again. We'll catch you guys on the other side.